guys. Our team sat down with one of Google's product managers for the commerce team to get all of the insights on Google Shopping. And I'm about to spill the tea because when it comes to increasing conversions on Google Shopping, the first thought might be to run paid campaigns and to put as much money as possible into them. But sometimes that's just not in the budget. And even if it is, should it really be your first move? Here's the thing. It doesn't matter how much money you put into your campaigns if your listings aren't optimized for conversions. So to help you with that, I'm going to share seven actionable tips that'll transform your listings, get you more visibility, and ultimately drive those sales up, all while keeping your ad budget right where it is. So if you're ready to boost your Google Shopping conversions without spending a single extra cent, then let's get into it. First up, an easy win. Make sure you're including the GTIN, or the Global Trade Item Number, in your Google Shopping feed. If your product doesn't have a GTIN, I'll explain what you can do instead in just a second. But if it does, then just know that according to Google, feeds that include GTIN get 40% more clicks and a 20% increase in conversion. If you're wondering why that is, basically by providing the GTIN, you're helping Google identify your product and match it better with customer searches. Think of it like giving Google the exact address instead of a vague location. Now, if you don't have a GTIN, you can use the manufacturer part number or the MPN as an alternative. And if you're creating your own products and there's no GTIN and no MPN, then you can still list your products, but you'll just need to be as specific as possible in the rest of your product data. The next two tips relate to optimizing images. According to Dennis, the product manager who's been at Google for over six years, optimizing your Google images should be your second highest priority when it comes to optimizing your listings for conversions. Here's a snippet from our conversation. Issues with images is the second most common thing that we see. As in Google, we have strict editorial standards around images and shopping. You should focus on images as a second priority. Which brings us to tip number two, use high quality images. An Etsy survey found that 90% of shoppers consider photo quality to be extremely or very important in their buying decisions. So if you're competing with someone offering the same product, having better images can tip the scales in your favor as buyers are more likely to choose a seller with higher quality photos. To meet requirements while optimizing for this, Dennis recommends submitting images of 800 by 800 pixels and of no more than four megabytes. Now, if you want to see how I resize images for all of my products in bulk in just a few clicks, let me know in the comments. All right, just having quality images isn't enough. So let's move on to tip number three, avoid promotional text in your images. And by avoid them, I mean don't include them at all in your photos. One of the most common reasons that images get disapproved on Google Shopping is because they include promotional text on them. Think images that say sale or 10% off. Google prefers clean, distraction-free images to ensure a better shopping experience. Plus, Google already has specific fields where you can include all of that promotional information. Now, there are a lot more tips related to images, so if you want a more in-depth video on this, let me know in the comments. On to tip number four, optimize your product titles with the right structure. Did you know that Google has a title structure recommendation for every business category? As you can see here, the basic naming structure is to include the brand name, the product, and attributes like color, size, and weight. Turns out though, that less than half of the products listed on Google have a product type or a color listed on their title. So just by adding these to your product title, you're already ahead. And depending on your industry, Dennis recommends including things like units or model number. Optimizing your product titles will not only help you rank organically, but it'll also improve your rankings in the shopping ads auction, meaning you're more likely to win that bid. Dennis also gave us some insider tips on how to optimize your titles for different goals. If you want higher impressions, you should include broader terms like shoes. But if you want to optimize for CTR, then you should include more specific terms. For example, running trainers. Doing this can boost your click-through rate by up to 25%. Okay, the next two tips are related to optimizing your product descriptions. 
Tip number five is to write the most important part of your descriptions first. Dennis mentions that you should include the most important details within the first 500 characters of your description because that's what Google crawls. The description is where you can expand on your product type using more specific terms like in the example here. Dennis also emphasized the importance of keeping the content in the description relevant because adding irrelevant keywords can actually negatively impact your listing. This ties in with tip number six, which is to include high quality information to qualify for free listings. As you know, there are the required attributes and the recommended attributes in your Google shopping feed. And many times businesses leave the recommended attribute fields empty, but by doing this, they're missing out on the opportunity to get some free publicity. As Dennis puts it, the more relevant attributes you have in your feeds, the more free formats your products are eligible for. By adding information to those attributes and making sure that they're optimized, you're giving your product the opportunity to appear in the knowledge panel, which shows up on the right-hand side of a Google search results page, as a product tag, which indicates that an image leads to a product's landing page, or in rich snippet annotations in search results, which can even tell us if the product is in stock. Including those additional attributes is also the deciding factor in whether you have a standard listing or an enhanced listing. Now, Dennis had a lot more to say about how to optimize product descriptions, so if you want me to share that, just type optimize descriptions in the comments section. And while you're at it, if you're finding this video helpful so far, don't forget to give it a like so we know to keep creating content like this. And of course, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on future tips. All right, we're going to shift gears once more for our last tip, which is to include customer reviews to your listings. According to Global Newswire, 95% of consumers read online reviews before making a purchase, and 81% of them use Google to find those reviews, which is why including customer reviews in your Google shopping listings is crucial. Reviews build trust with potential buyers and influence purchasing decisions by providing real feedback from other shoppers. Listings with reviews are more likely to rank higher in search results catch the attention of the buyer, and ultimately increase conversion rates. In fact, according to Spiegel Research Center, displaying online reviews can increase conversions by up to 270%. But make sure that these are real reviews, because according to Trustpilot, 62% of consumers will stop buying from a business if they find out that the reviews are being censored. All right, guys, that covers the top seven tips to boost your conversions on Google Shopping without increasing ad spend. If you found this helpful, you can grab a downloadable checklist of these tips to keep things organized. I'm leaving it in the description of this video. Also, if you're interested in learning how to create an automated Google Shopping feed so you can manage all of these product attributes seamlessly, I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. And of course, if you have any questions or if you want me to dive deeper into any of the topics that we covered today, drop me a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more tips like these, and I'll see you in the next video.